Hey everyone, I'm Pastor Brian, the assistant pastor here at Berean, and I oversee all student ministries, and one of those ministries is youth ministry. I am the youth pastor as well, and so we thought it'd be important for you to know where the youth room is, and then what goes on there. So how about you come with me, and we're going to go check out the youth building. We're going to start the auditorium, and we'll show you how to get there. Well, Brian, you went ahead and you started us off in the sanctuary and you brought us out to the youth building. So why don't we start with a big question. How do you view youth ministry? So I view youth ministry as the purpose. Its purpose is to make that bridge between children's ministry and fully functioning adult believers. Okay. Um, and so since that is what I believe youth ministry is, um, I think there is a critical role in taking children from Awana where they have a 20 minute rotation or children's Sunday school where it's um, a very abbreviated lesson to being ready to sit in the auditorium and listen to Pastor Sean preach for 45 or 50 minutes. Um, and so that's, that's what I see youth ministry as, is it's a discipleship making ministry that bridges that gap. And so that's where I believe my intentionality is. Okay. Within youth ministry, what are the different times that they gather together? So the two main times that we meet are Sunday morning during the Sunday school hour, just like all the adult Sunday school groups, all the children's Sunday school groups. So we meet uh, in the room that you and I are seated in. This is our senior high side. So ninth through 12th grade Sunday morning, we'll meet in this room. Okay. On the other side of the room, and I'm sure we can show uh, the audience that later, is where the junior high meet. So that's seventh and eighth grade Sunday school. Uh, from 9.30 to 10.30 each Sunday morning. Okay. And then also on Wednesday night, uh, we have youth group. I start supervision at 6 o'clock because Awana starts at 6.15, so we want to be able to give parents time, drop off their kids at Awana, let their kids go to youth, and it gives them a few minutes of buffer time if they need to hit up the restroom or stop by the coffee shop, um, talk to some people before their study starts at 6.30. So we'll get kicked off in here about 6.30 though, um, other than just you know hanging out and stuff like that. And then we'll go to about 7.45 when Awana ends. And that's um, primarily in this room, that's where most of the stuff happens. Uh, but the junior high side is also our game room, so there's plenty of things to do over there. And then also the parking lot has some different things set up like basketball rims and um, playground and stuff like that where the kids will either hit the volleyball around or Frisbees, you know, anything that those teenagers feel like they're doing that night. Mm -hmm. So Sunday morning, 9.30 to 10.30, Wednesday night, 6.30 to 7.45. Okay. So with those two different time slots, do you lead those or do you have other people within the Breen? So I am the pr primary leader. On Wednesday nights, I'm almost always in here, um, with the exception of one Wednesday night a month. Since I do oversee the other min children's ministries as well, I will step out and go oversee and just kind of check on Awana, see how they're doing, see what, um, from an outsider's perspective, how is that ministry going, what can we do to improve? So three out of four of the Wednesday nights of the month, uh, four out of five, if it happens to be a five Wednesday month, I'm in here. And then on Sunday mornings, um, I'm in here every Sunday except for two of those. One of those Sundays, I step out with my wife to go to adult class. The other Sunday, again, I step out to go oversee children's ministry. Um, but the guys who do step in for me are also my youth staff. So the guys who teach on Sunday morning when I'm not here are the guys who are in here on Wednesday night supervising. And so the kids know who they are. Um, so we're not... Um, discombobulated on what it is that we're doing. It's the same faces, it's just who's the lead uh, kind of changes. Uh, and what it also does is it gives me an opportunity to help uh, partner with grown men who want to develop their teaching gifts. Um, <clears throat> and there's no better way to cut your teeth than on teenagers. I would definitely agree <laughs> with that. 
So thinking through Sunday morning and Wednesday night, I've been here long enough that I know that's not the only time that you interact with the youth. Can you touch on other times and how you interact with the youth? Yeah, so um, we'll also schedule some a activities, uh, things that go on. One of the big ones throughout the summer is summer camp, mm -hmm. and that's really about it that I push for during the summer months, just because so many people are traveling with vacation schedules. Uh, but we'll do summer camp, and that's down at Camp Anchorage, which is a valuable ministry partner of ours. Uh, we support them like a missions project, because uh, that's what they are. They're an evangelist outreach uh, and we utilize them for that and then what we also do is we'll do different activities in fact one that we have coming up uh, just right around the corner is we have an all-night activity mm. and so um, yes all night so 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. Um, in fact this is the first time I've done several all-night activities but this is the first one that's a collaborative event with other local churches great uh, so I've been able to build a friendship with other youth pastors in the area and we decided we all do these things individually but the body of Christ is so much bigger than just 517 Glensford and so um, we're very like-minded. We might have a little bit of um, different practice in how we do things, but we agree on the gospel. We agree that Christ is the only way to heaven. Um, we just may work that out a little differently in our churches. And so I'm partnering with some other guys, and we're going to host it here at Berean. Um, in fact, not long ago, we hosted some of the same churches, hosted a dodgeball tournament. And so we let the kids pick up in six-man teams, and we hosted a dodgeball tournament. In fact, uh, we actually have a trophy back here that we made this thing an annual event. And so we all chipped in, bought a trophy, um, and so Berean got to bring home the trophy for the very first year. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, we've done other things like uh, movie nights where we'll just uh, kind of hang out and watch a movie, or we kind of do a kickoff and um, a send-off at the beginning and end of the summer. Kind of like knowing that, hey, summer ministry, is it, it kind of tones down. Um, so we'll do activities to kind of send the kids off or bring them back in to kind of kick off ministry. Uh, we've done carowinds. We've done go-karting activities. Um, one of the things I try to focus on with the kids, and this is, this is my perspective and the philosophy that I've adopted, is that when we're here to have fun, we're here to have fun. Mm -hmm. But when we're here to preach and to study the Word of God, we are here to study the Word of God. And so that's why I personally balance my, my youth ministry primarily on Wednesday nights in this. The first and the third Wednesday, these teenagers, some of them are barely teenagers, just turned 13, mm -hmm. will listen to an expository sermon that is 40 to 50 minutes in length. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll end at 35 minutes, but they're going to listen to that. But my trade-off for them is when I'm preaching, we're here to, to preach. But then we'll do other things on other Wednesday nights that'll be a little bit more fun or socially interactive. Uh, so currently, the second Wednesday night of the month, we're actually watching one of the episodes of the Chosen series. And so while they think we're just watching TV, I'm like, no, this is you are visualizing everything I'm teaching you, especially right now in the book of Matthew, mm -hmm. that they get to walk through and they get to see the illustrations of the stuff we're talking about. And then on the fourth Wednesday of the month is when we do our small groups. Um, so I picked up a book called Design for Discipleship from the Navigators Ministry. And so our small groups are working through that. And this year, uh, we're actually using some students to lead those with younger students, not just our adult youth staff. So that's kind of how we, um, we balance the fun with the seriousness of the ministry and how I can bridge the gap of you went from having fun every single night to, well, you're having fun half the month. Mm -hmm. And then as they get a little older, and things change, they're a little more prepared for the adult Bible studies and Sunday morning sermons. So one thing that I think that you do really need, Brian, is that you record uh, the messages mm -hmm. with the youth and then you put them on sermon audio. Right. And I think that would be a great opportunity if parents just want to be tracking what's going on, what they're learning, and they'll be able to dialogue with their students. Uh, I think that you do that very well. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's neat because sometimes I'll get a comment from someone that was like, hey, I was listening to this. So my Wednesday night sermon series through Matthew, mm -hmm. um, and then also currently on Sunday mornings, I'm teaching through Bible doctrines. Okay. And so actually I just got a, a note yesterday from a, a grandparent um, in the ministry that was tracking what I was teaching youth. And so that was really neat. Yeah. It's like, you know, I'm in here in a room with teenagers and sometimes it's kind of like, oh, it's just teenagers. And then I forget like, no, once this recording hits the internet, it, it's then serving other people and ministering to them. Okay. Well, Brian, before we take a look at the junior high room, any other topics? Did we miss anything? I don't know that we did. Um, 
that's most of the stuff that, that we cover around here. Um, one of the things that I have noticed recently uh, in the conversations with other youth pastors, um, and this is what I think makes Berean unique, is I was the only youth pastor of a group of about seven local youth pastors that spend as much time preaching when I preach as I do. And the rest of them were 20, 25 minute sermons. And so one of the things that, you know, as we were talking through it the other day, um, it really kind of bothered me because it was just like, how do we, how do we as youth pastors say that we're making disciples and we're trying to get them to transition? Mm -hmm. And I almost wonder, like, you know, has that contributed to this massive drop off of students that they hit the end of youth group and then they don't uh, assimilate into the adult ministry? Yeah. And that's something that, that's been on my heart recently and um, something that I want other people to know. Like, that's why I do. I've had people, well, you need to lower it down a little bit, or you need to, and I'm like, why? Why do I need to shorten this? Why do I need to bring this down to their level? Um, and I didn't just blatantly dismiss those kind of comments. I actually took a couple young men to, to lunch one day who don't come to our church. They show up only for my youth group. And I took them to lunch, and I was like, guys, I just want to pick your brain. Why do you come? Do you get anything? Do you understand it? And the feedback I got from them was phenomenal. So I don't need, we don't need to bring it down to them. What we need to do is we need to encourage them to bring it up and start understanding. And when we use big words, we explain big words. But that's something that we have to do. Okay. Well, well Brian, thank you for the time. Let's yeah. go ahead and take a look over at the junior high room. All right, let's go. Yeah.